Okay, so let's talk about uh, Seamus Heaney's poem, Digging. Uh, so a little bit of background information on Seamus Heaney. Uh, he was born in 1939, um, and he was born in Northern Ireland. Um, and if you know anything about Northern Ireland, there was um, a, sort of a tumultuous uh, political area to be from. So uh, Heaney would have been uh, sort of growing up uh, at a time when there was a lot of sort of trouble or strife between Northern and Southern Ireland. Um, and for almost three decades, uh, there was a lot of uh, violence and conflict between North and South Ireland. Um, uh, so he would have been sort of uh, a witness to some of that uh, political and uh, violent uprising. Um, he, ha he sort of uses a lot of the landscape and his Irish sort of uh, roots are shown in his writing. Um, so rural Ireland where he grew up is going to be a part of his uh, depiction of his early life. And he grew up uh, the son of a farmer. Um, so we do get some biographical kind of elements uh, in this poem related to growing up within a rural environment, being the son of a farmer, uh, and then not following in one's parents' footsteps is sort of one of the main ideas. Um, so rather than follow his, his father into farming, uh, Heaney chose a more uh, sort of less traditional route uh, and became a writer, a poet. Uh, so that's what this poem is going to deal with, a lot of the sort of inner conflict and also external conflict between father and son um, and how Heaney's occupation as a poet uh, both relates to and conflicts with his father's farming, um, his father's occupation of farming. Okay, so let's read the poem first before we get too much into uh, the meaning of it. So, Digging by Seamus Heaney. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests, snug as a gun. Under my window, a clean rasping sound, when the spade sinks into gravelly ground, my father digging. I look down till his straining rump among the flower beds bends low, comes up twenty years away, stooping in rhythm through potato drills where he was digging. The coarse boot nestled on the lug, the shaft against the inside knee was levered firmly. He rooted out tall tops, buried the bright edge deep to scatter new potatoes that we picked, loving their cool hardness in our hands. By God, the old man could handle a spade, just like his old man. My grandfather cut more turf in a day than any other man on Toner's bog. Once I carried him milk in a bottle, corked sloppily with paper. He straightened up to drink it, then fell to right away, nicking and slicing neatly heavy sods over his shoulder, going down and down for the good turf, digging. The cold smell of potato mold, the squelch and slap of soggy peat, the curt cuts of an edge through my living roots awaken in my head, but I've no spade to follow men like them. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. I'll dig with it. Okay, so uh, we have some interesting imagery there related to farming and Northern Ireland farming. A little different from Prairie Saskatchewan farming, but I think some of us could relate uh, with some of the depictions of our parents uh, involved with farming as well. Uh, so let's start, I guess, stanza by stanza and go through the poem in a little bit more detail. Uh, so between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests, snug as a gun. So he, he's, you can sort of picture him sitting at his desk, a pen resting in his hand between his finger and his thumb and then he describes it snug as a gun. Interesting image there. 
and I think that looks like a simile to me. Um, so he's comparing a pen and a gun in this case. Uh, the word snug is kind of a weird, it remind. it looks like gun, but just kind of um, an acronym, or not an acronym, uh, uh, sort of, you know, when it's all jumbled up together. <laughs> um, it looks like a, an ac um, anagram, sorry. Uh, so gun and snug kind of are, you know, almost this, exactly the same letters there. Um, so he's sort of holding his pen. Uh, it's not a gun. Um, so th the imagery of a gun could possibly relate to that, the, all the struggles of Northern Ireland, um, where there was a lot of violence. Um, so that could be what he's referring to there, but we don't really know for sure. And then under his window, so he's working at his desk, and then under the window, he hears a clean, rasping sound. And then it's his father digging in the gravelly ground, and it's a spade sinking into the gravel, and his father's digging in the garden. And then he looks down at his father. Uh, so there's a lot of, there's some rhyme schemes. So we have thumb, gun, sound, ground. A uh, little bit of rhyme uh, going on. I don't see really a clear pattern necessarily, but there are some similar sounds going on. And then third stanza, till his straining rump among the flower beds bends low, comes up 20 years away, stooping in rhythm through potato drills where he was digging. Okay, so we kind of have to unpack that one because there's a lot sort of going on that could be sort of misunderstood. Uh, so, go back to the beginning. Our speaker, a man similar to Seamus Heaney, I think he's, you know, really writing about himself, um, biographical. Uh, and he's writing at the desk, and then his father is outside the window digging in the garden, in the flower beds, and he's bending down, and then it's almost as if he's, uh, Seamus or our speaker is having a flashback. So as soon as he sees his father bend down, uh, the image comes up of 20 years ago uh, when his father would also be stooping in rhythm through potato fields where he was also digging. So that 20 years away is kind of important because that, that tells us that the speaker is sort of having a flashback to a memory of a long time ago uh, when his father was also digging in the field. Uh, but instead of a flower bed, it was in the potato drills. So potatoes are uh, one of the sort of chief crops of Ireland uh, and a big, a large part of their history uh, with the potato famine. Uh, but the potato has been sort of a, uh, you know, the most important sort of crop or uh, food source for uh, Ireland. So it's an essential part of sort of their tradition and heritage. And then, so he, this is sort of the flashback 20 years ago, his father worked in the potato fields where he would, he was digging. And then he imagines, or he sees again, the memory. Uh, so the coarse boot nestled on the lug, the shaft against the inside need was levered firmly. Um, so description of the act of digging, his boot, a coarse boot, nestled on the lug, the shaft against his inside knee was levered firmly. He rooted out tall tops, buried the bright edge deep to scatter new potatoes that we picked, loving their cool hardness in his hands. So he, it's not just his father, but we picked. So he was also involved at some point in uh, farming with his father. Uh, they used to, you know, enjoy planting the new potatoes um, and then rooting out the tall ones and picking up the new potatoes out of the soil. So at one point he was very involved uh, with farming uh, as a young boy, probably, when he would help his father out in the potato farm. And then, <coughs> excuse me. And then we have this, you know, two-line stanza, uh, and it sounds just like the speaker 
commenting on his father, by God, the old man could handle a spade, just like his old man. So it sounds as if there's a lot of pride there uh, from son to father, looking up to his father and how accomplished and how uh, like sort of uh, capable he was uh, at his craft or at his uh, occupation of farming. So he really admires the way his old man, his dad, uh, could handle a spade uh, when he was in uh, the potato fields. And it sounds also, we learn information that his father, his father's father, so his grandfather, uh, was also a man who worked the field, was also a farmer. Uh, so he comes from a long line of farming men. Um, his grandfather, his father, and then uh, Seamus, uh, who is not a farmer. So now we go back even further to the grandfather. So my grandfather cut more turf in a day than any other man on Toner's Bog. Uh, so cutting turf is exactly what you think it is, cutting uh, turf. So if you know anything about sort of Irish um, history or ancestry, uh, they would cut turf, or I guess it would be also called peat, uh, and this would they would use to um, fuel their houses. So they would burn it. So they would cut um, cut pieces of turf uh, on the land and then use it to heat up their homes and uh, use it as fuel. So it was really a mainstay of uh, the farming and how uh, families sort of survived uh, by cutting this turf or peat and then uh, using it to fuel their houses. Uh, and then he carries on. So once, so as a young boy, he carried his a bottle of milk to his grandfather and then he remembers how his grandfather stood up drank the milk and then right away went back to work so then fell to right away means he he didn't actually fall but he went right back to work uh, nicking and slicing the heavy sod and then throwing it over his shoulder going down and down for the good turf digging so just like his father and his father's father, digging is kind of the common thread uh, through the farming industry uh, that carries forward uh, through this family and represents sort of also a part of the Irish heritage. And then he also remembers the cold smell of potato mold, the squelch and slap of soggy peat, the curt cuts of an edge through living roots awaken in my head. So here we have a lot of alliteration, squelching and slapping and soggy and curt and cuts. Um, so it does give us a lot of imagery and sound uh, quality too, to this poem. Squelch and slap could be an example of onomatopoeia, uh, possibly with our the sound of the soggy peat hitting, piled on top of each other. And this image here, through living roots, awaken in my head. Uh, you could sort of unravel that uh, nice figurative language there. Um, so a memory awakening in his head and the comparison to sort of roots, living roots, coming to life inside his mind. Um, but there's this sort of turning point. Uh, the speaker says, but I've no spade to follow men like them. So he's broken with his family's tradition. He's not gonna follow in his father's footsteps or his grandfather's footsteps. He's not gonna be a farmer like them. He's gonna take his own path. Uh, so he doesn't have a spade, that's not the tool that he uses. Instead, he's going to use his own tool, in this case, a pen. So that's our final three lines. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. 
So that's a repetition from the first stanza. I'll dig with it. So the idea of digging uh, becomes or transforms with this last stanza into something that could be done with a pen rather than a spade or a shovel. Uh, so how does one person dig with a pen? You know, it, you write with a pen, you don't dig with a pen. So what is he actually going to do uh, rather than dig? Or how can writing be like digging? Uh, those are some connections that you can sort of use to understand or analyze this poem in a little bit more depth. depth. Uh, so if he's going to dig with his pen, maybe he's just going to dig within his own memory or dig into the past or uncover and search the depths by digging into history uh, or his heritage or his country. So it's digging can have other connotations to just the physical act of taking a spade and stabbing it into the ground and pulling up dirt. Uh, digging has um, other connotations that we can relate to writing. So that's something that if you were going to write about this poem, I would probably like you to address uh, what the speaker means when he says he's going to use his pen and he's going to dig with it. So that final line there is very important to understanding the overarching um, metaphor of digging in the poem. Uh, so any other, uh, there's some other things that you could look at. So you could definitely go through this poem and talk about uh, the sound quality of it. There's a lot of alliteration. Um, but I do think you need to sort of focus in on uh, overarching themes or ideas. Uh, so I think the digging is going to be an essential part of uh, any essay that I would expect somebody to write um, for this poem, if you were analyzing this one. But an interesting poem about a father and a son and the fam family legacy and how sometimes we don't follow in our parents' footsteps, but we can still celebrate them and maybe follow them in our own way, not necessarily in their chosen occupation, but uh, in our own ways we can sort of pass on that legacy or continue that legacy uh, with our own ways um, in a different way, but still celebrating the tradition of our heritage and family.